Our next exercise, we're going to take a look at still cleaning up data, but we're going to move over to the cleaning up data worksheet. Now on here, I described it a bit earlier, but it's got some kind of nesting happening within the records here. Our first row contains a couple of column headers. We got the date and we got the transaction ID. Down below that, we got groups of orders. Here, we got the date, the shipper, the product down below, then we've got the product ID, the transaction ID up above, product description, and the quantity. And then down below that, we repeat the process for the next order, and so on. So it's kind of nested within there. You know, I imagine that this came from some other system like Crystal Reports, a reporting tool, and somebody exported the report with all the formatting. So it looks great for a report, but it's useless as far as I want to sort and filter by the individual values and start to summarize through a pivot table. So we got to clean this up. So the process that we're going to go through here is really going to be two steps. That's really about it. The bulk of the work, two steps. One, we're going to use some conditional columns to be able to split the data up. As an example, this column right here contains two pieces of information. It's got the shipper. These are all shipper values right here. And then let's change color. These are all the products. So one column with two values. We want to split those into two different columns. Get a shipper name and a product name column. That way we can work with them independently. Same thing is happening right next door. We've got the transaction IDs, these numbers on the right, and then we got the product codes on the left. We need to clean that up. That's really going to be the first major step. Cleaning up the data, splitting the columns based on a condition. Now, we'll decide what that condition is in here in just a moment. The next thing that we're going to do here is once they're all split in their individual columns, we're going to have a bunch of holes in the data. So we're going to use the fill command that we saw earlier to fill each of the columns. All right, it's exciting. It's going to be a few steps to go through, but Power Query is going to do bulk of the work for us. And next week, when we get that report that comes back from wherever, done, done. All right, take a look. So first step, I did not convert this into a table. So I'm going to go to my data tab. I'm going to go to get data from sources from table range. Now it's going to prompt me, is that your range? And no, my table does not have a header. So I'm going to leave that unchecked. It does have headers, sort of, but I'm going to leave it unchecked and I'll hit OK. All right, so now inside of Power Query, we've got our data set up. Now the first row, because I said my data did not contain headers, is the header row. We're gonna end up changing them somewhat, but I wanna get that out of the data set. I don't wanna include that as we're cleaning stuff up. So I'm gonna go to my Home tab, underneath the Transform section, I'll use the option, Use First Row as Headers. All right, there we go. So we got date up there, we got column two, because that one didn't have one. We got transaction ID, which is actually two bits of information. We got column four, column five, those didn't have headers. All right, so now, if we look closely at the data, our date column inside of there has got either a date or a null value. Because okay? remember, looking back at our data here, it was empty. They just created that kind of nesting grouping style within the report. So. We're gonna use that to our advantage here. I'm gonna start from left to right. So starting on my column number two, I'm gonna split this column into two columns utilizing the null value in the date column. If we look closely, the null values line up with the product names in every section, right? It's huge, we can use that. So. I'm gonna select column two. I'm gonna to go to add column, conditional column. We used this earlier, but we're gonna see a little bit of a twist here. So the first column I'm gonna create, let's call this one product, man, product name, my spelling. All right, so we're gonna say if date, if the date column equals null, that has that null value in there, right? 
So if date equals null, then we're going to output something. But what is it that we want to output? What do we want to put inside the product name column? Well, we want to put the product names. So instead of a static value, instead of typing something in there like apples, because then it would be apples for everybody, we're going to change our output from this text value to selecting a column. And the column we're going to select is going to be column two, which is this guy right here. So if date equals null, give us what's inside column two. I'll hit OK. And there's our new column. I'm just going to move stuff around, make it easier for me. So there's all of our products right there. And where there was a date, we now have a null value in there. We'll clean that up. So there's one. Now we need to get the shipper, right? We need to get all of these values right here into their own column. So now I'm just going to select that column, conditional column, and I'm gonna repeat the process, but again with a slight twist. So we'll call this one shipper name. I'm gonna say if the date column, once again, this time instead of equals null, we'll say does not equal null. And then I'm going to output a selected column and output column two. All right. So if there's a date, if it's not null, then we get back speedy, united, and so on. I'll hit OK. And there is our new column. Ta -da! Now we don't need column two anymore. It served its purpose. We're done. Let's delete it. So I'm going to select that column, right click, remove. Let's get rid of it. All right, so first two are done. Now, we're just gonna repeat the process again, but do it for the transaction IDs. So these guys, the right aligned values here, these numeric values are the order ID, the transaction ID. These guys over here, right, that one, and these three, and these three, and so on, those are all of the product IDs that are matching up with the products in there. So. We'll just repeat it again, practically the same. So I'll grab transaction ID, back to add column, conditional column, and we'll call this one, we'll do the product IDs first. Product ID, then we'll say if the date equals null, sound familiar? Then we'll output a column, and we're gonna output the transaction ID. So there's my product IDs, all done. And then let's repeat it once again, let's get the transaction IDs. So I'm gonna select that, conditional column, and we'll call this one transaction ID. If the date does not, because this time we're getting the transaction IDs, right? Those right aligned numbers does not equal null, then we'll select a column and we'll grab the transaction ID call. And there it is. Let's put that one all the way back towards the beginning. All right, this guy has served his purpose. Once again, right click, remove, done. All right, so we've got each of the data sets. Let's just take a peek there. We've got each of the data sets or each of the data points broken up into their individual columns. There's not one column that's sharing two different data points now. Nice. So there's phase one. We've split the columns, right? We've utilized a conditional calculation to create a column and break that up. Now the next step is we got all these null values in there. We gotta fill these up. So we're gonna use the fill command that we saw earlier to fill down and to fill up. Now let's see. I'm gonna select date, that one needs to fill down. I'm gonna hold down my control key and I'm gonna grab transaction ID, which also needs to fill down. Shipper name needs to fill down. This one needs to fill up because the nulls at the top, nulls at the top, nulls at, those all need to fill at the top. All right, so with those three selected, I will right click and I will fill and I will fill down. Boop. Done. All right, now, don't get too concerned right now because we got a lot of records in there, right? There's 15 records and we just created a bunch of duplicates, but we'll fix that. Now I'm gonna grab product ID and the last column there I held the shift key and this one I'm gonna say fill up. Right click, fill up, Boop. done. All right, 
now it's looking pretty good. We got columns, we got rows of data. Let's rename all our columns. We got date, transaction ID, shipper name, product ID, product code. This one is the description, product description. And this one was the quantity. All right. And that one's, we can change our data types. That one should be a whole number. Look good. This one over here, we don't want the time. This one should just be a date. All right, man, it's looking good. We got all these steps over here that we've accomplished to clean up that data. Now, here's the final step. We got the data, but because we used the fill command and the way that we broke the data up, there's some duplicate records happening inside of here. So let's see if we can identify one. Here we go. January 1st, 2020, uh, transaction ID 123987, Speedy Express ordered apples, 12 of them. And if we look right down below, it's an exact duplicate. And there's a few of them in here like that. Well, we're gonna grab all the columns here. I'll grab date, shift key, grab quantity. And now I'm gonna go to my home tab, underneath reduce rows, we'll go to remove rows, and I'm gonna remove duplicates. Whoop. And there's our 10 records. How quick, right? No cut, copy, paste. No hassle trying to move stuff around and make it look good. Power Query did it for us. Just through a couple of quick calculations, filling data and removing duplicates, and you're done. And once again, once somebody dumps that report down from that other system and brings it to you inside of Excel, right? There's no crying involved. There's no worrying. It's just a couple of button presses. Use the same steps. Done. Very slick. All right. I'm going to finish it up. I'm gonna to go to my close and load, close and load two, and let's just put it into the existing worksheet. Let's put it off to the side somewhere, and I'll hit okay. And there's my data. So let's match them up here. We've got this order right here, which is now its own little line right there. We've got transaction ID 123987, right? Check, right there. It was shipped Speed Express for apples, 12 of them. And then down below, we've got an order with three products, all on the 5th of January for the transaction ID 123986. Check. And we got them all right there. And it repeats it. Nice, well formatted list. We can now filter, sort, create pivot tables off of it, do what we need to with it. And eventually, if we wanted to get back to this, nice formatted report on the left, and we just pivot. We create a pivot table and you've got your report. So make sure you try this out. If you didn't follow along with me right there, you can rewind, rewatch. There's a few steps, but really just a couple, just repeated, and it's now a nice formatted list. Try it out.